Today we're talking to Lisa Edwards. She's an award-winning screenwriter. She is a high-profile trader and she's into crypto. And we're going to be talking about her success. We're going to be talking about her career and where she is going. If it's your first time here, this channel is all about entrepreneurship, success mindset, and sales training videos. So if you like that, go ahead, subscribe down below. And Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Paul. It's amazing to be here. So Lisa, let me ask you something. You've done so much in your life. Uh, first of all, you were an actress. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I believe you were an EastEnders, and I remember that from being a kid. No, Neighbors. Neighbors. So, okay, yeah. well, close. Close. <laughs> <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you went into um, doing other things in your life all the way to writing screenplays. I got to ask you, though, before all this, before mm -hmm. doing what you're doing now, what were you like? If I met you in high school, what would I yeah. think about you? Um, I was the naughty kid in high school, so I was, <laughs> my sister and I were always wagging school and going down to the theme parks and yeah, we were naughty kids, <laughs> much, much to my mum's, um, like stress level, like we were putting it right up there. So <laughs> yeah, she was paying big dollars for us to go to school and we were never there. But, but did you study, did you read on your own or were you just out of it completely? Uh, of school? No, I did really well. I didn't need oh. to be at school. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was like an A plus student. So it was like it was boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the same issue, but I was not an A plus student. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just, I was one of those kids that didn't need to study. So yeah, if, if I did study, I did extra, extra well, but like all of my maths and my English and, and all of those, I was getting sort of, you know, 95% without studying. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened sure after? I could, have been a, I could have been a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you still are. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, you are into technical analysis, and that's not something very common. Let me ask you, what happened after? How did you get on TV? How did you get into Neighbours? Not EastEnders, Neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I studied sort of acting, and I, like, years and years of study of acting. So, um, yeah, that, that was kind of what I wanted to do. So it was, you know, that was fun. It, it challenged me. It kept me entertained. And, yeah. So, whereas, you know, doing sort of, you know, your everyday schoolwork was kind of a bit boring and, you know, I was, uh, I, I, while I was shy, I was kind of shy for approaching new people. I'm not like that anymore. But um, at school, in my younger sort of, you know, high school years, I was, I was bullied a lot and mm. mum took me out and, you know, changed schools and that sort of thing because, you know, I, I was bullied for being too smart, which is mm. crazy. So, yeah. Um, and then she found a school that, you know, I, I kind of fit into and yeah, it was, it was kind of fun. And yeah, I, 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 how to explain why I wanted to do acting. It was just something I always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, done, I've done a bit of acting. I was in uh, some Greek soap operas and stuff like that. And for a while. For <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's fun. It is fun. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, I never became an actor, but you know, like something on that. But, but I, I did my piece. It was fun. What happened after that? How, why, why did you stop, first of all? I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, so I, before, I, so I was doing that. Um, I had kids. Um, I had a lot of kids. And <laughs> at that point when I stopped, I had four kids. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, I got divorced at that point. Um, that's where the Edwards comes and, um, yeah, I, and I, w I was working for Craig, um, my brother, Dr. Craig Wright at the time, I was working with him at De Morgan mm -hmm. and, um, you know, a couple of years down the track after working for him, I took a redundancy package from the business and, mm -hmm. um, because I, I wanted to go back into acting. I wanted to pursue the stuff that I wanted to do. And, um, I bought an agency because in my mind, <laughs> this crazy, the crazy way I think, the best way to get myself acting was to own the agency. So 
it makes sense, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> In theory, it makes sense, but when you're the owner, you're so busy, you just don't have time to do that. So, yeah, so in theory, it was the best thing to do, but in reality, it was a lot of work and it was, you know, I, I had all these amazing actors and models and everything on my books and I was, you know, working long, long hours finding them work. So, yeah, so I did that for 13 years and then I thought, hang on a sec, I only get one life and I want to do what I want to do and that's when I sold the agency and I started writing and I went back into acting got you did you um, realize did you realize you bought yourself a job hey Paul here let me jump in real quick if you're getting value so far from watching this video then please consider subscribing down below and hitting that bell notification button it will help me and you get to watch more videos like this one thank you and let's jump back into the video yeah, after a while, right? it kind of became that. It was like, hang on a sec, this isn't what it was meant to be. <laughs> I used to entertain, I used to be an entertainer MC, and uh, I had a nightclub, which I performed at as well, but I also yeah. had my own company, my production company and everything. It just felt like I was working for everybody else all the time. It, it was like, Yeah, and that's kind of what it was. It was like this thing that I bought so that I would do the things that I wanted to do, and I ended up doing everything everyone else wanted to do. So right. it, yeah, it was crazy. So, so yeah, when I, when I realized that, that's when I sold it. And, and, and then, and then if, and that, is that how you went through the screenplay or did you get into cryptocurrency first? Like which one came first after that? Um, good question. Probably both at the same time. Okay. So um, I had cryptocurrency and I wasn't trading it. I was just hodling it. And I was all, I've always been a trader because that's, it's a good way to make additional income. Um, especially if you know what you're doing, not if you I don't know what you're doing. I was about to say when you know what you're doing, because I, <laughs> <When> you <do. laughs> I started now day trading. Yeah. So if, if you don't know what you're doing, you can lose a lot of money. If you do know what you're doing, you can make a lot of money. So, and yeah. you know, you, you're not always winning, but you average out your trades and you know, you win more than what you lose. And yeah, so in 2013, I sold, was it 2013? Hmm. Mm. Hang on. Yeah, 2013, I sold the business. And that's kind of when cryptocurrency was starting to become more tradable. So, hmm. you know, and there was a couple of small exchanges that were trading it. Mount Gox was trading it, of course. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I think anyone who's, you know, been around since that time lost money on Mount Gox, but you know, what can you do? I heard about uh, that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that kind of, when I saw the business, I had a nice chunk of money that was going to last me, you know, a certain period. And I thought, I'll just start trading it. And awesome. that way I'll be able to live for, you know, however long <laughs> cool. of the money without having like a real job. <laughs> it is a real job. Yeah, you know, I didn't need Mount, Mount Gox to lose all my money. I did it anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that kind of happens, doesn't it? Yeah, I have, I have yeah. twice in my life, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I was, I, was, I was trading and um, I, I was trading and I thought I was making money. Then I realized I would have made more if I wasn't trading. I was just holding. Then I realized the problem was I didn't know how to trade. So yeah. I went through that whole cycle thing. So I'm still learning. So how did the, um, how did, how, how did this whole um, movie come about? Because I know that it's releasing in 2020, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which um, I've got a couple of movies. So I've got, uh, Blink, which okay. is uh, co-written with a friend of mine. So that one came around in 2013 at the same time that I sold my agency. So uh, one of my best friends was standing in my kitchen. She said, I had this dream and, you know, I think it could be a movie. And I'm like, sounds good. So she told me the dream and she's told me how, you know, the mechanics of it worked and it was, it was quite dark. And I said, we can definitely do this. We can write this. We can do this. So we got a storyboard. We planned it all out. And then we sat down and we wrote it. And um, the first draft actually won the New York Screenwriting Awards. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so that was the first draft. So that's the worst it could ever be. Um, yeah, so it stayed within that sort of framework for about three years. And uh, that first draft was called Limbo and it won seven awards as Limbo. And then um, we started talking with some producers and it got renamed and it's now called Blink. So mm. because it, it's a darker thriller now. So uh, it, it got darker name, and like. sort of edgier. Yeah, Blink, it's a great like name. That. So was Limbo, really but like Blink it. I think is a... Yeah, so what nice. happens in the film like is, you know, these four women get taken simultaneously and they get locked in a room. So, um, and there's a man that comes in and he tells them that three will die and one will live and these women need to choose who that is. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's quite dark and it, it goes through all the choices that you make in your life to get to where you are and why you made those choices and how you could have done that differently and... Yeah, so that's it kind of unravels the lives. And, it, you know, as an audience member, you're sitting there and you're like, okay, if my life was in this room, what would I be doing? What would I choose? So, yeah, so that's that's kind of that movie. And then um, crypto trading um, sort of took me, you know, in the direction of discords, of OTC, of doing all these wild and crazy things with money and traveling all around the world and being in a different country every day for, you know, uh, start of this year, I was in, I think, 13 different countries within a period of three months. So it was like this but crazy not time. Greece. No, not Greece. Why, Lisa? Why? It's like, <laughs> come on. It, it was literally just a stone's throw away from where I was. I was in Europe. So, yeah, I do have to get to Greece. It looks beautiful. We could be doing the interview right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm I not sure it's it, warmer than Melbourne. It is very warm. It's hot right now. I have a fan over there. and it's. Yeah. Um, I think Australia gets warmer, though, in general. Um, it does, yeah. I want to get back into crypto, but I want to go a little bit into success mindset, what it actually takes to succeed in life and in crypto in this case. And I want to ask you, what does success mean to you? Your definition the of success. Success is being able to live the life that I want to live, to live the life that I love. So, yeah, I've got a tattoo. It's there. It's, a, it's an affinity. Okay. So, and it says, live the life you love, love the life you live. Nice. And that's success. That is so, nice. Yeah, so that's, that's the daily reminder. So, at the time when I sold my business in 2013, I was, I was at a period where it was like, I didn't want to be doing that. And it was sort of, you know, you get to a stage where you've decided that you don't want to be doing something and it's, you know, it's sort of, every day is a challenge to do that mm. thing and yeah so it was that was the tattoo that i can change my life i can change my world and yeah that that was kind of what blink was as well um it was these four women that you know can change their lives and you know trying to escape this room where only one person is going to live so yeah what happens at the end you have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> what happens at the end so, of the other one that's coming out? <laughs> oh, the, the, the cryptocurrency, so Coin Runners, so is based on probably about a year of my life. So, right. yeah, and a, a relationship that I had within the industry with a high profile guy. And, um, you know, some of the stuff you got messed up in drugs and, you know, you can't save somebody so they can only save themselves. And that was kind of a big lesson for me. And, you know, and, and trying to keep businesses running when everything's sort of falling around, you know, apart around you. And yeah, so it's, it's finding this inner strength to move forward and to keep going. And that's what the movie is. So you know, that's a great um, bridge onto what I was going to ask about success just, just before, because being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what people don't understand is being an entrepreneur, you're not working for somebody else. You're working no. for yourself. And that's not the hard part. The hard part is when everything is falling around you, <laughs> what you do. So 
Yeah. Uh, for me, yeah, for example. I, did, I saw I saw a really good quote on that. Sorry to interrupt you, but I did see a really good quote on that today. So when you know everything's falling around you, it's how you react, not yeah. your yeah. Stoicism. It's your reaction to that. Yeah. Yeah, you can only so, react. You can't. But so when when for, but, but but people don't understand what could go wrong or, or how hard it is. So let me give you an example. Everything okay. can go wrong. <laughs> I lost my nightclub in maybe uh, well, well, quite a few years ago. All right, mm -hmm. and everything was going up and down. When bankrupt made it again. When bankrupt and made really well, then I got cancer. Then I was getting oh, cancer. Okay. I had chemotherapy. I had bone marrow transplant. But I wrote my books, I pulled through, and like, uh -huh. hey, you know, you react. Then yeah. everything was going well, and I learned that my mother had cancer and my sister had cancer while my house was burning down in Guneta. Oh, no. My sister died last year. Oh, my mother died I'm this sorry year. to hear that. Meanwhile, my dad had two heart attacks in between. So it was me going through hospital to hospital to hospital. And here, oh, here's, my the goodness. Thing. here's the thing. Yeah. When you work for somebody, it's easier because you just go to work, you pull through, you forget, you do what you got to do. But when yeah. you have your own stuff around you, I'll be honest with you, last two months, I just stopped doing everything. And that, I, yeah. I just had too much. I was overwhelmed. That was it. Now I'm bouncing back slowly. Um, <laughs> that's kind of what happened to me at the end of it. And that's how the movie was born. It was sort of this therapeutic thing to get that out of my system and to move forward and um you know somebody i think it was a therapist i was going to a therapist at the time because it was such a stressful like overwhelming thing like similar to what happened but different because i didn't have people die so i almost had people die and it was kind of yeah. that terrifying sort of thing that you know i can't do anything to save this person and he, you know, is in control of his own life. And if he overdoses like he was doing, then I just have to accept that. And it's like, you get so overprotective of that person and so, you know, crazy. And <laughs> it, it's just, it's this whole emotional roller coaster that went with that. So, you know, I stopped working in that business and I'm lucky that I do have enough money to support myself yeah. and, you know, I can trade and I can do all of that. And, you know, I took two months off and decided what I wanted to do to move forward. Yeah. And yeah, so that's where Coin Runners was sort of born. And yeah, but I, I can't imagine having, you know, two family members die within that small period and then your dad's sick again. And I saved like, them last yeah. minute. Yeah. And my mom. If I wasn't here, she would have died before she died because I, I ran her to hospital. I was here. I almost died. Anyway, so it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just can't this. imagine the stress that, that goes with all of that. So it's like, you know, they, they say to, you know, walk in somebody else's shoes and it's like, because you don't know what they're feeling and, I have this thing that you have to be nice to everyone because you don't know if they've woken up and, you know, their wife's at home dying or, you know, something's try, happened in their life. Try to make that to Twitter. Oh, <laughs> For all you Twitter God. people watching this right now. Yeah, all you haters. Yeah, all you haters. Yes, you too. <laughs> there, there's the worst haters on Twitter. So finally they've just started doing something about it so they've got some new stuff happening where you can you know block people and report yeah. them you've always been able to do that but there's certain criteria now that you know bans these accounts which has been good so yeah yeah so, so how do you because being an entrepreneur even in trades right whether you're a trader yeah. or entrepreneur it's it's a likewise sort of uh, path we, we, we both go through it how do you handle yeah. failure how do you push through because everyone fails. Don't tell me you haven't yeah. failed, whether it's trades or whatever. Everyone fails. Oh, so many. There's, there's days where like you will have, like the other day where Bitcoin crashed and I think I had four or five failed trades. And it's like, and I'm sitting there and I'm updating my Discord and I'm like, oh God, not another one. And, but 
it's part of what you do. It's it's all part of the journey. It's like, so, you know, the following week we had a killer week and we made like 30% on Litecoin, 30% on right. uh, Bitcoin Cash, 30% on, you know, just about every sort of alt there was. And then Bitcoin was running and, you know, we had margin trades on that. So the following week, and it happened and, you know, so we had four trades that all failed and they were 3%. So mm. stop loss is always 3%. So it's 12% we lost after making these amazing trades. So, you know, when you put it in perspective, it's not a failure. It yeah. might feel really bad at the time when I'm going, oh, God, I've got to put another failed trade in Discord. But it's just part of life. So, you know, and it's it, with my agency we didn't win every contract so you know there was some that i was yeah. like damn I, I really wanted to do that contract or you know you'd be on a job and somebody you know we were supplying talent or or you know models for something and somebody didn't turn up and the clients like going crazy at you and all of a sudden you just got to think on your feet it's like what do i need to do um, how do I fix this and let's move forward. So, you know, it's, it's always this positive sort of energy that you have to put onto it. It's never a failure. It's just a different way of doing things. It's we're moving in a different direction, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's, it's never a failure. That's, that's a great example, by the way. I actually own a video production company, Two Real Productions, and uh, I was doing producing <laughs> for anything like that uh by the way for you for you guys watching comment down below would you do if you were in the crash if you're into bitcoin if you're at the crash 40 percent down what, what did you do um i had everything I in my wallet so loss. i couldn't do anything <laughs> i didn't have no stop losses no nothing i just no. like, <laughs> like crumble down uh, yeah, that's, that's a sad thought. thing for, for hodlers it's like hodlers would be sitting there going yesterday i was rich not so much. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah. Now, what drives you? Because I'm sure you have a goal, you have a purpose, you have a vision. What drives you? What makes you keep going? What's that burning fire within you? Um, that's a good question. So in recent months, probably in the recent last couple of years, I've changed the way I look at everything. So it used to be that I would have a goal and I'd get there and the goalpost would move and I wouldn't celebrate anything because, you know, the next target was there or the next thing was going to happen. And I found that that was a really negative way of looking at life because I was never celebrating all these small achievements that I was making. And it, that kind of led to, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be here anymore because this isn't pleasing me. It's not, you know, satisfying any desire in me. So I, I kind of sat back and I went, okay, um, I've got all these amazing achievements. You know, I've got 14 awards for Blink. Um, when it was Limbo, it won seven awards. So in total, that film's got 21 screenwriting awards. And, you know, I've got three books, three novels, and I've got this other film. And, you know, the, the books have just, I've just written a, a TV pilot for those. So, you know, that's really exciting as well. And that's what one of the two awards. About? <laughs> Good question. They're they're about crazy Lisa as well. So just you know, so the books are Can't Fight Fate, Chasing Butterflies, and Seed of the Sunflower, and they're about a girl named Nikki, not me. So okay. <laughs> yeah, so a girl named Nikki, and um, when she's twenty one, she goes to a psychic, and this psychic describes perfect men. So she spends her life looking for this guy and it gets, she gets to her late thirties and she hasn't found him. And, you know, she's just broken up with a long-term partner. She walks in and him and, you know, he's cheating on her and she's like, okay, right. My life's got to, got to change. I'm going to find the guy that's described on this psychic tape. So that's her mission. And yeah, so it, it's kind of like Sex in the City meets Ally McNeil, if you remember that show, The, the Clumsy Lawyer. 
Um, yeah, so Nikki's an entertainment lawyer, so she's a really smart, intelligent woman, but her one sticking point is relationships and she can't find this guy. So, yeah, so we see her dating, like, lots of the wrong people. <laughs> That's really cool. And the disastrous like circumstances, yeah. Is there also humour in it? Or? Oh, yes, very comedic. So that was really fun to write. By the way, again, for you people watching out there, watching Lisa, uh, we, I, we're also writing a few books. Lisa's in the Crypto Factor Volume 2. This is, that's part of what this, well, this is what this interview is for, actually. <laughs> There'll be more information in the book. Um, this is part one, by the way, the Crypto Factor. I'll leave a link down in the description below. I'll leave everything that Lisa's doing as well, all her links in the description below. Check that out. And yeah, I, I write a few books. <laughs> Yeah, I know. You've got some uh, amazing ones. All the guys in my Discord are re reading one of your books. What one would that be? Uh, which one? This Let's, one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, does he have a copy just handy? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, I've, I'm, uh, we're releasing another book on uh, blockchain and crypto marketing and also a magazine pretty soon. So oh, and I'm excellent. also working on another one with your brother and some other people in cryptocurrency as well. Amazing. So everyone yeah. knows I, I'm in the cryptocurrency in general. Uh, yeah. But I'm fond of your brother. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it's just style. I just he's, like his good class. Uh, he's, a, he's a crazy man. I don't know if you yeah. get the crazy man side of him. So. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think anybody can succeed in crypto? Let me rephrase that. Do you think anybody can succeed as a trader in crypto or in crypto? If they learn, yes. So if you are prepared to, it's, it's like anything in life. If you're prepared to put in the time to learn and to, you know, hone your skills and to sharpen your tools and be the best you can be, then yes, you can succeed, for sure. And, and what does it take other than learning, other than learning what you're supposed to do? Okay, so if you want to be a trader, um, sites like BitMEX um, offer test nets. So I highly recommend going onto their test nets and trading before you go onto the live. You know, it, it is a little bit different because you're like, it's not my money, so it doesn't matter, it's not real money, but you know, it is practice makes perfect. So, you know, see if you can make money on the test net, even though it's not real money and then start small. So, because regardless of whether you've got a lot of money to spend in crypto or you've got a little bit of money to spend in crypto, if you can't trade and you're going to, you know, I'd rather lose a little bit of money than a mm. lot of money. Because it doesn't matter if, you know, you can't trade a little bit of money, you're not going to be able to trade a lot of money. It's just how it works. Got you. All right. Yeah. Now, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the biggest problem in cryptocurrency and crypto in general? Like what holds crypto in itself back and what might hold the individual back as well? It's a two and crypto in itself is held back by the stigma that, you know, the general public thinks it's corrupt and they think that it's, you know, everyone's stealing money and dealing drugs with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not what happens. It's like there's a whole ecosystem of these amazing projects and these amazing talented people and, you know, so many things that happen. And there's so many really, really cool people in the space. And it's like you go to these uh, conferences and events and you meet them all and you hear their stories and how they got into crypto and how they started. And some people it's by accident. Some people have done, you know, course after course and they're programmers and they're developers and, you know, they've got all these different languages that they can, you know, program in. And, you know, there's so many different people in the space trying to, you know, do something and create a new life and create a new world. This is, we're on, you know, sort of the precipice of this new beginning, um, you know, new monetary system to start with. And yeah, we're at the beginning of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what was the second part of that question? I think I did. <laughs> Crypt in the whole and the person in, as an individual. Okay. Um, 
person as an individual doing well in crypto is just about you know taking the time to learn and it's yeah that that's what it's about so making connections is a good thing in crypto as well so if you're on crypto twitter be nice because if you're not i'm gonna block you <laughs> <laughs> yes some really cool comeback answers and one-liners by the way i love them <laughs> uh, yeah i do it's just like and everyone says just don't feed the trolls and i'm like it's fun to be smart to them <laughs> 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 pretty much yeah so, so personal questions. i think that's why they do it so yeah okay some personal <laughs> questions you ready yeah i'm ready do you have any mentors or did you have any mentors in life um with acting or with screenwriting or anything okay, any, with anything that you you feel that contributed to your success in any yeah, field. so um, I had a, an acting teacher. His name was Alexi Vallis. Um, he's, you know, made a whole heap of movies himself. But he was amazing in just teaching me how to be me, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So because acting is all about bringing yourself to the screen and bringing your essence to that character. So, you know, he did... And that helped with me being out in the public and me talking to people. And, you know, I was this shy little person and he was like, no, you're amazing. Be you. It's like, yeah. So he, he was that person that did that. And then um, screenwriting, there's so many people, so many people that have helped along the way. There's, um, I'm working at the moment uh, with this amazing woman, Janet Jeffries. She's from Lawrence Bender Productions and she's helping me with Coin Runners. And she is just the most inspiring, amazing woman ever. Mm. So, and yeah, so if I can do half the things that she's done in her life, I'll be happy. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, and in crypto, there's just, there's so many people. So, you know, my brother for originally sort of, you know, he stuck me into this job at De Morgan when I was, you know, a single mum with four kids. And he's like, right, I'm going to help you. And, you know, you're really smart and you're going to do this. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, he, he did that for me at the start and I, I, you know, forever appreciate that because that has sent me on this journey and I'm here now. So in crypto. Do you talk to your brother? <laughs> yeah, I do. So not, not as much as we, WhatsApp. So, yeah. So if he's watching this right now, is, is there anything you want to tell him real quick? <laughs> it's like, be nice to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Who else do you appreciate in the, in, in the crypto industry, if you will? In the crypto industry, um, everyone I meet, everyone I meet. So, okay. yeah, it's along the way, like I've met uh, amazing girl Ivy through Twitter, um, Crypto Wendio, she's amazing. There's so many boys in the space um, that are, you know, I just went to Singapore and, you know, I met all these new people that are like all friends now and, yeah. you know, we message each other and it's like, you, you just meet so many amazing people in this space and it's, you just click yeah. and yeah. And it's like, oh, I've got a new group of friends now. So that's really exciting. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so another question now, do you have any habits or morning rituals that you go by? Lots of coffee. Lots of coffee. <laughs> yeah. I have to I make have like my bed every day. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I probably have three coffees, like yeah. three espressos before I start the day. Before I start so, drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. Before I start drinking coffee. So I have espressos before coffee, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I have to make my bed. It's mm. like it's a, it's the first thing that I do. I've heard every day. of that. I've heard of yeah. that as a, as a success habit as well. I never do it. I, 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 full transparency, <laughs> but I've heard of that. 
Yeah, no, it's it's one of these things I have to do every day. And if I don't do it and say I'm running late and I've come downstairs because I do a lot of meetings with um, like LA and New York. So I'm, I'm up all hours of the day. And um, yeah, so if I, I get up, I'm running late, I, you know, put my makeup on and, and it's not like a guy because you've got to do makeup and, you know, I've just pulled my hair back today. But um yeah, so if I haven't done that, I'll go back after the meeting and I'll make my bed. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> Crazy but I, true. I figure so. I'm going to sleep again at night. What's the point? <laughs> I know I it's a guy think, thing. Yeah, Maybe it's, it's a, a guy, guy thing. thing. I'm not even sure. I think, you, it's, who, I think it's a guy thing. Who here makes their bed? Comment down below if you make your bed every day or if you think it's a waste of time or if you have someone else do it, uh, <laughs> depending. <laughs> So, yeah, so that, that's kind of my morning ritual. So coffee and making my bed. Hobbies? <laughs> Hobbies, uh, yoga. Um, I collect beanie bears. It's not really a hobby, but... <laughs> it's a hobby. So I, I think it it is, a hobby. You know, beanie bears, I love them. Like they're, hang on, in my cabinet over there. Oh, wow. Okay. So Greg Wright has suits of armors. You have beanie bears in the background. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've always collected them since I was young. So and I've got thousands, literally thousands of wow. them now. So, yeah. So Craig collected like samurai swords yeah. and, you know, all this. Oh, I've got this story. So as a kid, he was, he would dress up as a ninja because, you know, like kids do, you know, I think I was probably eight or nine years old and he was a couple of years older than me. And, you know, now they dress up as, I don't know, Power Rangers or whatever they dress up as, Spider-Man. So, but he was a ninja. And, you know, he talked mum into buying these ninja stars. And, you know, I don't know what mum was thinking when she <laughs> bought them, but he would throw them at us. So Danielle and I, that's uh, younger sister. So it was Craig, me and Danielle that grew up together. And there's two other sisters, but they didn't grow up with us. And they're younger. And he would throw these and they would literally land in the wall and cut the wall. Holy shit. And it's like, occasionally they would hit us and he would think it was the funniest thing, like as brothers do. <laughs> but it's just like this obsession with Japanese stuff and, and you know, he was a ninja and oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, stories like that. And, you know, he would pretend he was chopping our heads off and, you know, if we were, yeah. So. That is cool. I, I got a thing for Japanese culture. I used to do Aiyado and all that stuff as well. But, yeah, uh, yeah. It's cool, man. So, okay. Oh, another hobby you were saying, I, I love cars and I love racing. So, yeah, I used to do that as well. If you say Lambo, I'm, 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 I'm clicking off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't own a Lambo. Okay. These are crypto and Lambo. Is a bit, what do you have? What's your favorite um, car that you have? If I was going to buy a really expensive car, I would buy a Ferrari, California, the convertible one. I it agree. Would have to be I agree. I prefer a Ferrari than Lambo. Yeah, I'd have to go a Ferrari, not a Lambo. A Lambo is a bit too flashy. I think you can get away with a Ferrari. It just looks like a yeah. sports car. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, and advice for people watching, don't go broke trying to look rich. It's, you don't have to get a Lambo yet. You can wait and get it later. No. Yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> a lot of people, they get excited, they make some money in trading, and they just put it all into something else, you know. Like. Yeah, I think, you know, I'd rather buy, if that's going to devalue, I think I'd rather buy real estate or something like that. So, Yeah. Uh, and soon you'll be able to buy it with crypto as well, if not already. Sorry, new crypto? You'll be able to buy land with crypto pretty soon, if not already. Yeah, I think you can in places already buy it with crypto. So, yeah. There's, right. there's been a few transactions I've heard about in Australia where people have bought houses with crypto. So. All right, so yeah. I want to ask you a few more questions, but off the camera for the book. So I just want to ask you All this. Right. How can people reach you to either do business for or with you, 
uh, I don't know, uh, learn how to trade, go on a date, whatever. How do people reach you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I am single, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm single. Um, okay. I don't have time to date. Um, so, actually, I have been dating a nice guy. F famous last words. <laughs> like, I don't have time to date. <laughs> yeah, no, I have actually been dating a nice guy. So, there you go. That's cool. It, but you it, know, you it, just it, trapped it, yourself in the next conference right now. I'm single. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You're not going to get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe no oh god so how can people <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so okay they can get me for trading and for business they can head to satoshisisters.com um okay. there's a online form that you can fill in and you can contact me via there um you can get me on twitter on which is lisa and edwards you can get me on linkedin for business which is lisa and edwards um you can message me without being connected uh i've changed the settings on that because a lot of people were saying i can't connect to you so um mm. that's probably the best way for business um for my books and for my movies, you can check me out on IMDb. Just search Lisa and Edwards, everything. <laughs> and my company is Visual Media Group. So that's visualmediagroup.com.au if you want to have a look at what we're doing. Awesome. And I'll link all that down yeah. below as well. Uh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification button. If you want to watch more videos like this, we will. I hopefully will have Lisa back on after her movie, maybe, maybe a little bit before, we'll see. And don't forget we'll to check her out in the Crypto Factor Part 2. One last question before I yes. go on to the question. So, if the, what is the one question that you wish people asked you, but seldom do? Okay. <laughs> that I wish they would ask me. Or they should ask you. Okay. This could be success. This could be uh, to help them to, for every, anything like that. What do you think or what people should ask you so you can answer them, so you can actually help them? So I could actually help them. Hmm. Well, if that's what you want to do, you might want a totally different type of question. You might like do the one yeah, I, I, I person or a dog person. Yeah, <laughs> like what, what should they ask me? It's like... Well, if they're good looking and <laughs> <laughs> they should say, hey, Lisa, would you like to come on the day? No. <laughs> um, Let's talk no, crypto. It, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I don't know. Everyone asks me all random sort of lots and lots of different questions. But I, I suppose um, the, the one that pops into mind is what do you want to be when you grow up? And it's like, because, because I haven't grown up yet. That is awesome though. That is yeah. awesome. That says a lot. So you so still like, feel like a kid. You still have that average. You still have the drive. Yeah. I still, I always think that some of the things I do a lot of silly things and I do a lot of things without thinking. So I don't think I've grown up yet and I don't think I want to. So what do I want to do when I grow up? I don't want to grow up. Okay, but you're going to have yeah. to answer for the book, though. What do you want to be when you grow up and why? So that's one of the questions we're going to do off camera. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa, for, for, for doing this. Really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun and looking forward to talk to you more. Thank you so much for having me on today. It's been amazing. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye, and I'll see Bye. you in the next video. Bye-bye.